What's up? We are here in the warehouse. A little bit cleaner. This video is about kind of a conspiracy theory that I'm working on today, March 1st, 2019. Amazon, the Bezos, <laughs> announced that they were going to be doing this new thing called Project Zero. Amazon Project Zero. The implication being that there will be zero counterfeit listings. That's kind of the thing they're going for. Although I have to admit, calling it Project Zero does sound kind of end of the world-esque. Kind of um, apocalyptic and scary. Because, you know, what are you trying to have? Nothing left? Okay, uh, Skynet. <laughs> Bezosnet. But the reason I'm kind of saying it's a conspiracy uh, is because if you watch the videos back in September, uh, I'm sorry, actually November or December, and then prior to that in June, there was a whole bunch of suspensions that happened like kind of like in blankets. So in June it was um, textbooks and toys, like like toy like vinyl toys type of things. And then in, in September, I'm sorry, in November, I keep saying September, in November, it was textbooks. And, and this, this second one in November was actually called a textbook sting because a lot of people uh, got suspended who even had invoices in their accounts. And it was a, a weird thing. And after talking to a few reps at textbook companies, we were able to figure out that it was a new feature they're offering that allowed brands uh, more power to, to, to ban people, to suspend people. And this announcement for Project Zero only confirms that. Uh, with Project Zero, what's going to happen, and it's this is the first day it's been announced, but I, my theory, my conspiracy theory, is they've been doing this for, for a year, you know, months. And this is just like the final, you know, version they're taking um, and publicizing. It's empty. Son of a bitch. I got a very dry throat. <coughs> Always oh, have water. Um, so Project Zero, what I think it is, is I think it's been a thing in, in the, the, the works for a while because if you sell on Amazon or if you've seen people like me go through Amazon liquidation pallets, you know that there's so much cheap Chinese shit and so much realistically counterfeit shit, uh, especially in textbooks. And I'm not even talking about like international versions or that kind of stuff. I'm saying there are people in the United States or in China, but mostly in China if we're being real. Uh, who will just blatantly, without re remorse, <laughs> copyright, you know, sell copyrighted products, trademark products, that kind of stuff, proprietary information, intellectual property. There's so many words you see on your Amazon report. That's all the stuff that they do. And this Project Zero is supposed to streamline that. Uh, and so what Amazon says is that it's going to effectively give brands and at this point it's only invite brands and they have to have a training process and all this stuff so all the bugs that we've been talking about happening on the channel for the past year um they're not saying it's from that but if there's weird stuff happening with people being banned for months at a time and then a year later this new uh banning it's not software but i mean this new account privileges for high volume sellers comes out. It doesn't take a genius to, you know, connect one to the other. It's it's what they're doing. And so part of me just wants to bring this up and tell you because okay, what's going to happen is like it's for the the big brands like Apple and Sony and what they're doing and what what the announcement actually said is that they're um offering a serialization service serialization, which is a hard word for me to say, which would mean they would have their own, not proprietary, but their own barcode. I'll call, I'll just call it a barcode. Their barcode or serial number uh, written into some part of the device or the packaging, like the same way if you buy like a, a video game. Let's say you buy Madden 2015. It has a little NFL PA or the NFL, one of the two uh, holographic stickers on it. Um, just consider it, a, it's their own holographic sticker that verifies it is a, um, a non-counterfeit product. And so part of me thinks, oh boy, this is going to be the worst. Not going to be good because 
whenever has a, a large brand or corporation ever withheld restraint uh, in, you know, in their actions and, and the things they do towards small businesses? I can't think of, I can think of one instance, and that's when Amazon linked to Bonanza for their um, background remover tool for, for creating new listings. That's like, you know, that's the one, that's the one thing. Uh, someone just said in the chat, it's going to be like works. And that's, you could be totally right. Works is a, a brand of wrenches or tools or some hardware or whatever, little hand tools. But they are extremely protective of their brand. And if you list anything on Works, you're going to get IP claims and probably suspended. And so part of me thinks that this new Project Zero is going to be that. It's going to be blanket bans and it's going to be... Um, Complaints that never go answered because you're no longer talking to customer service, to seller support, to seller central, which was impossible as it was. Now you're going to have to go through some intermediary intermediary in the brand that you're trying to say, hey, I can sell this. Part of me thinks it's going to be a shit show. Another part of me thinks, hey, this could be good for us, for us resellers, for us third-party sellers, people who are not necessarily... Um, going to have invoices or large wholesale accounts or retail arbitrage even. Maybe this means that they can just check the product and say, hey, it's real. Like, okay, uh, I don't have invoices from you. You're selling 25,000 Nerf guns. But when I check the Nerf guns, they all have this serialization holographic number barcode sticker, whatever on it. This unit of data that is easy to put on that can verify its authenticity. So maybe it'll work out into the advantage of, uh, of resellers. I don't know. But what I do know is that this is a trend. Something is happening. Amazon is getting more and more exclusive. Exclusive in the sense that there's more reasons that, that you can get banned. It's more difficult to get ungated for certain things. It's becoming a platform that's trying to gear itself as the world's online supermarket or grocery store, or whatever it is, you get everything on there and you get everything from the best people. And in their opinion, the best people are those who manufacture it or very large distributors, which it's kind of hard to argue against that. What is also kind of an interesting thing that no one is really talking about. I've read, you know, the blog post from Amazon. There's an article on The Verge. There's some other stuff going on. It's kind of, it's not huge news. You know, it's Friday. Not huge news, but it's big enough news uh, that, that it's being picked up. And so no one's really talking about how it's going to affect um, out-of-production products, older products. So like these VCRs I've got right there. Let's say they're all Sony 799HFs, which is a VCR that goes for like 125 but it hasn't been made in, at this point, like 20 years. Is Sony going to opt into this and then ban everyone who doesn't have invoices or ban everyone who doesn't have proof that their products are legitimate and since this product was made 20 years before the option for serialization already came out is that going to mean obviously not like tomorrow it's not going to happen but in five years and in, in, in three years and six months and some extended time period is amazon going to make it extremely difficult to sell used electronics and if so What's the alternative? Um, something to ponder. You know, it, it gives a, a very strong argument, or it segues into a very strong argument for diversification and why you should be selling on multiple platforms and why you should have multiple businesses. And if you're at a larger scale, why you want to have probably even separate warehouses at Amazon. The larger accounts, yeah, they know what they're doing, so that's, you know... Just me speculating on a potential course of action. But it's always good to think, okay, what's my next step? What's my next five steps? Um, we're Just a quick video I wanted to pop on. If anybody has any questions, I'm going to pull the video up on, on, my, uh, on my computer right here ahead of me. And then I'll answer any questions you have. It can be about Project Zero. Although, honestly, I, I don't think I can really answer much about that because there's not a lot of information on it. I could read you off the press release, but 
that sounds boring, and I don't think you want that. Um, a few of the questions that have been asked, uh, this is Art, just asked a question. He said, he or she, unrelated, but when selling on Mercari, how do you handle shipping? Is it always better to ship on your own versus using their shipping plans? Um, I don't know about the higher weight items because I've never sold anything that weighs more than, you know, 10 pounds on Mercari. Um, so after that, potentially you might have FedEx rates that are lower than volumetric pricing from USPS above 10 pounds. But below 10 pounds, um, the standard 425, you know, whatever it is, 625 rate that USPS gives you for uh, items that are either under a half pound, or a pound, three pounds, you, you know the scale. Those are not your best rates. You can go on Pirate Shipper and, and probably save between, you know, a buck 25 and three dollars on first class mail shipping. And then volumetric pricing um, from USPS, I don't know what that is ahead of me. It's based on uh, where it's going and where you are and all that stuff. So I can't, I can't just pull a number out of my head there, out of my hat. Um, but I, what I can say is, in most in instances, and probably the rule of thumb, uh, is going to be that printing off your own shipping on a service like PirateShipper.com, which is free, um, well, that's what's gonna uh, gonna save you those nickels and dimes and dollar bills. But uh, I don't use it. I just use the in-app shipping because it's so much easier and it auto updates and it's the kind of thing where I'll pay the extra two dollars or whatever it is on these items I'm selling on there, partially because I'm not using Mercari as like a, a means of propelling my business, and partially because it's easy. Uh, let's see. Jason's Treasure Hunting and more says, I buy my own shipping on Mercari through PayPal. Yeah, that's another option too, Jason. You're totally right. Shane O'Donnelly, who is a Patreon member, which reminds me, if you are not a Patreon member, why not? Three bucks a month, you buy me a coffee. I appreciate it. Uh, what Shane says, pirate shipping, or pirate ship, uh, Free includes insurance up to a hundred bucks too. So cool, good to know. Thank you, Shane. Um, Pirate ship went way above eBay's pricing. Says Matthew, you might not be putting in the, the volumetric numbers correctly because they're unless eBay is subsidizing their pricing, which I don't think they are. Uh, it should be very similar. A A M M asks. If you had something large for sale, like a generator, and I think you mean like one of the large wheel around power your house generators, brand new, would you use Amazon or is it better to sell locally due to weight, shipping, storage? Would you need to be on gated for a generator? I've never sold one before, but I can guarantee you, unless you have a pallet uh, jack in your garage, you can't FBA it because it's, it's, you have to ship it on a pallet. It's too heavy. Those things weigh a lot, a lot of weight. Um, yeah, 200 pounds is, is what the, the, they said, 8,000 watt. That's a big generator. So I assume you live in an area where that's necessary. Uh, I guess, I, obviously, if you live in, you know, I don't know, coastal San Diego. They're probably not as popular there, but in Michigan, where I live, this, the power goes out, like, every week in the winter in some places. So uh, I would say Craigslist, Facebook, Marketplace, Let Go, any of those local apps because besides the fact that they're going to want you to deliver it and all that, you know, there's just a lot of stuff involved with heavy shipments. Um, and selling locally mitigates the issues for most of them. Uh, let's see. Matthew says, on Pirate Ship, priority fat flat rate envelope is $6.95 and it's $6.75 on eBay. Um, and then he says, cubic shipping is better on Pirate Ship. Um, I don't know about that. I, last time I checked on pirate shipping, um, the 695 was for a bubble mailer. So I'll show you right now. I have two on me actually. I'm over here. I'm just, I'm just doing something else. I can't find the, because uh, I never even use them really, the um, uh, flat rate mailers. 
but there's there's really there's two kinds of mailers. There's this kind right here, and then there's um there's the uh, like the the actual cardboard mailer, and that might be the difference in price. Uh, I've never really heard of a flat rate mailer being being um priced up. Yeah, I can't I can't find it. Uh, they're extremely similar in size, and so I mean I could be totally wrong because I don't have it ahead of me right now. But the last time I checked, that difference in price um, is going to be a flat rate envelope. One of them's bubbled. This one has got bubble wrap on the inside, and you can get these online. They're free from uh, the post office. Versus a, just a cardboard one, and those are the ones you see stacked up inside the post offices. These have to be ordered online, and you can get them in. Um, I buy them in. Uh, Cases of a hundred. I don't buy them. I order them from the post office, and uh, cases of a hundred, and ship out orders in those. Excuse me. Uh, do you use eBay the least or Mercari? Says Blessed Day. I use Mercari. I don't really use eBay at all. Um, I might get back into it. In the in the summer, so I'm cleaning out the warehouse. Um, I'd say we're about thirty five percent done. Uh, and what's going to happen as we get closer to like 80% done, I'm just going to start taking things that I can't sell anywhere else and auctioning them off, um, auctioning them off on, uh, on eBay, just on Sundays, I'll put up 99 cent auctions and just move the stuff out of there. I know a lot of resellers don't like auctions. I love auctions because they're fun. They're exciting. And when I'm doing them, I'm not really that concerned about how much money's coming in because it's like the bottom, bottom barrel stuff. Toothpaste conspiracy says Tim Hicks. <laughs> yeah, Tim, it's uh, there's fluoride on Amazon. Fluoride in the keys. Bezos is trying to wipe our minds, and <laughs> I just watched um the Joe Rogan interview with <laughs> with Alex Jones. So I, I might go off onto some rant about interdimensional aliens and how uh, Amazon's in a big conspiracy to. I don't know. Everything else is just cra it's just crazy. Um, any more questions, guys? We're just at 15 minutes or 17:32. It's Friday night. Not the biggest night for uh, for live streams for me, at least. But I uh, wanted to pop in, you know, talk about Project Zero. Say, hey, maybe you know, don't retail arbitrage like big brands. If you do for a few days, let it calm down. See what happens. See it go on the forums. Which is what I do. I go on the, the, the forums on Seller Support. When you log into Seller Central, in the bottom left corner is the forums. And mostly, it's uh, it's people bitching about like, I don't make enough money on Amazon. But whatever. Sometimes you hear people saying like, hey, I got banned. Why? And then you can research that and find out what they were selling and why they got banned. Um, I do a lot of that just because I'm paranoid about being banned. Um... Maybe you should do that too if you sell, you know, top 1%. That's, that's what we'll say. If you sell top 1% brands, you know, so like Funko Pops, like popular ones, or Nerf guns or Legos or whatever, stuff that's also easily counterfeited, um, textbooks, new textbooks, I would pump the brakes for a few days and just, you know, kind of chill on that to see what exactly is happening. I wouldn't assume anything bad's going to happen, but like, Better safe than sorry, you know. Patience is your friend. That's what I, that's what I always say. Matthew Beeman says, "Do I see a zebra printer in the back there? You should see three. Oh, right there. Yeah, you do. You see two of them. Or no, sorry, one's a dymo. One's a. You see a dymo and then a zebra um, next to it, and then my other zebra is also on that table. Yeah, you can. So there's one, there's one, and there's one. Good eye." Good eye, Matthew. Ricky Bobby says, R.I.P. Stephen Brody Stevens. I saw I saw Brody Stevens do comedy once uh, in Detroit at L Club. Who knows how long ago? I don't know if he's dead or not. Um, just commenting on his name. Tim Hicks says they put sodium fluoride in toothpaste, not fluoride. Completely different chemical. God, I was way off. Uh, Matthew says, what if my zebra prints light instead of dark? Easy fix. Yes, it is an easy fix. So what you want to do is, do you have a Mac or a PC? That's the first question I have to ask you. If you have a PC, it's really easy. You just go into printer settings, and it's right there. 
But if you have a Mac, you have to go into this thing called Cups, which I don't even, I could not tell you the exact URL for it. So what it is, is you put Cups, just Google Cups. Um, oh, it's a PC, never mind. If you have a Mac, just Google Cups plus Zebra, and you'll be taken to a printer interface that allows you to uh, change the darkness. And if you have a, um, a PC, you should be, just be able to go into printer settings and then properties for that specific printer. Um, and then uh, you can either, the three things you can change are the speed it prints, how dark it is, and the DPI, which is dots per inch. I mean, the D isn't dots, but it's, it's basically dot. It's resolution, basically. Um, and so you can raise the resolution, raise the darkness, and lower the speed, and that'll give you the darkest uh, printer you can get. How is this comedy show, Ricky Bobby asks. Um, I don't know. Not my type. People liked him. Everyone else thought he was funny. Uh, he's a very, he's a very skilled, if he's really dead, I just don't want to talk bad about him. He's a very skilled, uh, comedian. You know, he's a professional, so it was, it went well. I don't, I mean, he's a good guy. A good act, or a good, a good comedian. I'm sorry I may have missed it. How to get ungated for Panasonic VCR, says Thomas Watson. Well, you have two options, Thomas. Three options, if we're being thorough. Option one. Invoices. Find someone who wholesales Panasonic and buy from them. Option two, get auto ungated. For me, it took, this would have been, a, you know, years ago at this point, but I got ungated in Panasonic in about six months, and I was selling heavy duty. You know, I was doing 15, 20 grand a month um, gross revenue on Amazon for those first six months. So um, that's when I got ungated. Been ever since. Never had an issue. And the third option is to buy an account uh, that's ungated. And the way you would go about that is you buy a business with an existing Amazon account. And it's, it's, it's a mess to do. It's going to be expensive. And I can't think of a good reason why anyone would ever do that instead of the previous two options. Unless they were nefarious and were doing some sneaky stuff. Uh, Thrifty Treasures says hello, and then like a lump that's smiling. Thank you. I too am a lump that smiles. Ben M, have you tried or seen the new style zebra like printer called the ArcScan 2054A shipping label printer? Looks almost exactly like the 2844, which is these models are uh, it's the LP2844. And they are old as dirt. Uh, I haven't checked it out. No, I I bought that Dymo at a thrift store. It was like, it was $12. That's why I own it. Um, I like zebras. I've used them forever. Uh, I, I bet I've printed off 100,000 labels on that on, on one of those zebras. And it's fine with me. Baron Von Deals. Is this the live at five? He asks. What the heck? Uh, the live at five. <coughs> I, I don't have the schedule for that. Sometimes I'm busy at five, <laughs> so I stop putting it in the title. But I am going to be trying to live stream or, or publish videos in the afternoon, you know, three or four times a week. Um, just no just no little hashtag in front of them. Uh, Matthew asks, have you ever thought of going to your thrift stores on Dollar Day and buying hundreds of clothing items and then selling them to other resellers at two bucks a piece? Matthew, you must be new because that was a video I made last summer. Um, I did wholesale clothing to people, and I did buy hundreds of items of clothing. And then what I ended up doing was shipping made it didn't make it really reasonable um, for the for the clothing on Aardvark lots. That, that was the business. I, I've since shut down the website. Um, I think the link is still in the description. Actually, I stopped paying. I stopped it because it was just it wasn't um, it didn't make sense for me to sell on there. Uh, and so I have done that. It kind of works, but what I ended up doing was just taking a lot of it to Plato's Closet, and it ended up being a Plato's Closet video. And you can make money doing that, but like not very much money. It's like 38% profit. So you like you spend a thousand bucks, you make 380. It's a lot of work. It's not guaranteed because um, a lot of stuff doesn't sell. That's why I don't like clothes because a lot of clothes don't sell. Um, <clears throat> any more questions, guys? We're just, uh, just at the 25 minute mark, and that sounds like a short enough video for me, long enough video. Um, 
I'll see you guys later. Subscribe to the video if you're here. Give it a thumbs up. Um, if you want to watch the Play Those Closet stuff, just type in WB Knobloch, Play Those Closet, um, and you'll, you'll get the video. Uh, one more question. A. Taylor says, for someone who hasn't gotten their label printer yet, can the small parcel label for the outside of the box be printed? Oh, absolutely. You can do anything on, a, on an inkjet printer you, that you would do with a thermal printer. It just takes ink. Um, it, it, yeah, it's the same process. So uh, see you guys later. Subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up. Um, and then if you, if, you, if you like the videos, tell a friend. You know, do all that good stuff.